Good evening, Willowdale, and welcome to Meet Your Neighbor, NeighborLink North York's weekly interview series. Each and every week, we introduce you to a new neighbor who helps make Willowdale such a special place to live. And we ask them tough questions like, who's the best person to take your family's photo in Willowdale? I think our guest this week can answer that question for us. Well, actually, she is the answer. We are so excited to be joined by North York-based family photographer, Jamie Lucas. Her focus is on stunning and luxurious photos and creating a memorable photography experience so that every home is decorated with love. I love that. And speaking of home, she's called Willowdale her home since 2015 and says she can't imagine living it anywhere else. We're so thrilled that Jamie stopped by. And before we chat with her, allow me to introduce uh, your Meet Your Neighbor host, Lily Chang. Thanks, Sebastian. Hi, Willowdale. Happy Monday. I know a lot of people find Mondays difficult, but you're almost done the day. And why don't you sit back, have a coffee or something maybe more soothing like a chamomile tea and meet a fellow neighbor with me. Let us welcome family photographer and neighbor, Jamie Lucas. Hello, Willowdale. Good evening, Hi. everyone. Nice Thank to you. meet you, Jamie. Nice um, you. Yeah, so we were saying to Jamie before we went live that this is not hard-hitting journalism. It's simply <laughs> two neighbors chatting, getting to know each other, and hopefully all those who are tuning in also have a chance to meet a fellow neighbor. Uh, so Jamie, tell me, uh, how long ago did you land in Willowdale? Uh, so my husband and I moved to Willowdale in 2015. Uh, prior to that, I did work in the area. Um, I had an HR job at the Young and Elmhurst buildings. Um, and I've been working there, or I was working there since 2009. And so I knew Willowdale for a very, very long time, but we weren't blessed with the, um, you know, the chance to live here until 2015. And once we had that chance, we totally took it. So <laughs> what prompted you to move to this neighborhood after working here? Um, well, one, I wanted to be closer to work, but two, I've always loved Willowdale. I felt like it, first of all, it's part of Toronto proper and I love my city. Um, but there was always, it, it always, I love the food, for example, and I love being just on Yonge Street and seeing all the activity and hustle and bustle. Um, you know, being on the subway line means being accessible to downtown too. Um, but it was still far enough from downtown that it wasn't too chaotic. <laughs> It's kind of that nice blend of urban with a touch of suburban, right? I agree completely. And we we moved from Richmond Hill and Richmond Hill was a wonderful neighborhood. I, I definitely felt a strong sense of community. Once I, I get off Young Street into our neighborhood, I do feel that suburban life, but you're always steps away from all the fun and activity on Young Street. That's right. And so you actually started your family in Willowdale, is that correct? <laughs> I, did. I did. So we, we purchased our home in 2015, and then my daughter was born in 2016. So life changed a little bit when she was born. Um, but the neighborhood, I have to say, it was a great choice for families. Um, I've made some of the most amazing mommy friends living in North York. Uh, thanks to you and um, North York moms, there were always a group of moms and people who I can count on if I have any mom related questions. And honestly, I feel so, so lucky to be living here. I wouldn't, you know, if I had to choose anywhere else to live in the city, it would still always be Willowdale. How has it been raising a baby now, you know, a five year old in Willowdale? What do you think uh, has been different or unique about raising a child in this neighborhood? Uh, let's see. So Prior to having Livia, I didn't have other kids. She was my firstborn. And I feel like as a new mom, it can be very lonely and a little bit scary. Um, and, you know, not knowing who to ask and, you know, who to speak to when you're expecting a baby. And I'm not sure if I had joined North York Moms just yet, but I did discover the Ontario Earlier Center. And there was a group of moms. Um, I think it was called My Baby and Me. And we had our infants in the basement of a church in Willowdale, and we did activities together. And that's where I formed the network that I have now of mommy friends who I can always talk to and message because we were experiencing similar things at the same time. First heat, first diaper rash, first fever, you name it, first steps. 
Um, and so, so I'm thankful that I found that community of moms. And I, from what I understand, um, it's hard to get into those programs because once they're full, they're full. Um, so I, you know, I hope that since Livy has been born, that more programs have have come up for for new and expecting moms. But I can say, you know, the school choices are excellent. The daycare options were amazing. Um, but yeah, it it was a wonderful experience. And Livy is five now, um, and the adventures just keep coming. So I'm I'm really really happy to call Willowdale our home and ha have her grow up here. Can I ask, was Balbir your facilitator? Yes, yes, she was, and I love her. <laughs> so she actually retired uh, during the pandemic. Oh. But uh, yeah, Balbir has been a staple of building mom communities in North York and especially mm -hmm. here in Willowdale, I think for years and years. And uh, she was actually the founder of starting North York Moms because mm -hmm. I started North York Moms from a group of moms that I met in my first My Baby and Me class. Mm -hmm. And that became, yeah, the foundation for North York Moms. So, And now look at it. How many members are we now? How many members? Over 10,000 in North oh, York Moms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So about here, yeah, we got to circle back with her sometime because uh, we should actually interview her and just hear how retirement life is going. <laughs> she, you know, she'd have that doll um, that she would use as her baby in the class. <laughs> and I think it's timeless, right? Like how many generations of moms <laughs> will carry that memory and just how welcoming she was. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, thanks for um, reminding me of just this, kind of like a hero really to moms who are all kind of like, we're all blind and trying to feel our way in the dark as a new mom. And she was really just this beacon of connection and caring and advice. I agree. I agree. I, I don't, I don't know if uh, Balbir lives in Willowdale, but I, I almost wept our last class with her because she was so kind. And I honestly, I'm so thankful for that program. The songs that I learned, some days I don't realize it, but I'm singing it to my daughter out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, I'll never forget Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a staple in my family. <laughs> so actually, um, the good news is after many, many years, uh, they are opening a center at Young and Shepherd in the Young Shepherd Center. So I think the grand opening is the, at the end of this month. There'll be a virtual grand opening, uh, but it's been years in the works. And kind of the seed uh, that started it was uh, when I had a kid mm -hmm, back mm -hmm. like eight years ago, I said to the city councilor, like, you know, in the winter, I have to bundle up my baby. It's minus something degrees. And why is there nothing walkable for the hundreds of new moms on Young Street? So, um, you know, that that was just a conversation, but I'm so grateful that from that conversation, it catalyzed this possibility. And now there will be an early on right at Young and Shepherd walkable. You know, my kids are too old <laughs> to enjoy it, but for generations of moms to come, hopefully it'll be a landing place, so. I agree. I agree. It's. I think it's. It's long overdue. We need more. Um, but yeah, it's. It's. I think it's an amazing initiative. Do you know exactly where they're considering? It's already uh, been actually built. So, uh, yeah. So it was negotiated into a building development at Young and Shepherd, and it. You know, because of the pandemic, everything mm -hmm. kind of dragged out longer. But it's been something that they've been working on for years now. That's mm -hmm. exciting. That's very, very exciting. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. So we'll have to, you know, go to the virtual grand opening. Uh, I'll share the link in our group when I get the invitation. So yes, yeah. Yes. And so it sounds like you also had a career change. So not only a life milestone of becoming a mom here in Willowdale, uh, but you moved here to be closer to work, but then you transitioned to a new career. Can you tell us about that moment? And <laughs> courage to kind of take that leap yes um, so, yeah my mom, my mom um i photography was always 
an interest of mine. It was a hobby at first. Um, and my studio is actually 10 years old. I've been doing this for 10 oh. years now. So it did start in Richmond Hill. Um, I was operating out of a tiny room in our house at the time. And then when we found this house, um, it, it's funny, I always tell people this story. We were house hunting and we literally only saw five houses. And the primary thing we did when we visited homes at the time was, is there space for Jamie's studio? And when we found this house, it had good bones and it was perfect for us. And as you can see behind me, I have a residential studio. So I work out of my home. Um, and so in 2015, when we moved here, my husband was pretty much my handyman and he helped me build my studio um, and into, this, into the place that it is now. Um, it's much bigger than the space that I had in Richmond Hill. And I'm, I'm very, very thrilled and you know grateful for, for what I have. Um, so yeah, essentially it started with weddings. My whole goal was to be a wedding photographer and a few of my brides had babies and then everyone started having babies. <laughs> so the business kind of exploded from there. And when I had Livia, um, it made me realize, you know, as much as I love weddings, I don't know if I can continue doing the 13, 14, 15 hour days anymore. And it really helped me focus on my passion for studio work. So, um, as of right now, my, my specialties now uh, are maternity, newborns, um, babies, and cake smashes, and, and beyond. So I, I want to call them milestones, but you know, we don't always have to be celebrating a specific milestone in life to have a photo shoot. I do have some families that come back and do fall photo shoots with me. I have my holiday minis that are coming up just around the corner, actually. Um, and I do Mama, Mama and Me in the spring to celebrate Mother's Day. So, you know, there's all these little things in life where you don't have to find an excuse to take good quality pictures. And I feel like after a couple of really hard years in Ontario and in the world, um, you know, now would be a great time to take pictures, right? Um, you know, do do something with the the time that we have open. I, you know, I really hope that with the way things are moving, that it stays this way. Um, but yeah, I have to say, with with my holiday minis coming up, I went really big because I think we all deserve a little ray of sunshine right now. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. Um, and it must have been hard during the first few lockdowns. Did you have to kind of shut down your business for a while? Absolutely. And we all had to write a lot of, um, mm -hmm. I have to say, in in my world, the small business world and the photography world, I did have a few friends who had commercial spaces, and they had to shut down their studios completely and go out of business and, and pursue other career opportunities. And, you know, even though I wasn't making a ton of money from my studio, at least the studio was in my home. So I didn't have to shut down my storefront and my studio completely. It's still here, as you can see. Um, and thankfully, now that we're coming out of the woods, um, I can open things back up again and take some, you know, some great portraits for people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as a mom uh, of two kids, we've done our share of family photos. And I find it incredibly stressful to style my family. <laughs> like every time... The day before the photo shoot, I'm like, oh my gosh, why did I sign up for a photo shoot? Now I have to find some kind of matching shirt or some kind of, you know, neutral, good looking photo photo. And I'm like, I just don't know how to do this. So what tips do you have for mm -hmm. families uh, or anyone really in preparing for a photo shoot? Because it's not just about showing up, right? Like you do have to do some preparation. That's exactly it. So, so Lily, you hit the nail right on the head because I, I, I'd like to ask people, what, what's stopping you? What's holding you back from take from having your portraits taken? And what are your biggest frustrations when it comes to photo shoots? And a lot of it is, what are my children going to wear? What am I going to wear? Um, you know, and I have, can you work around baby's nap time or so and so has tennis class? What's the best time to do a photo shoot outside? So. With my photography, my photography sessions, I like to work with my clients very much and do what's called a video, um, a pre-shoot consultation. So, and I know that not every photo studio does this, but I really want to make sure that my clients have a wonderful experience. That when they come to 
you know, when they come to the studio or the park or wherever we're holding the photo shoot, that they know what they're getting into. They're comfortable with what they're wearing and there are no surprises. That way I'm not getting a text message the night before saying, oh my God, Jamie, I don't know what to wear. So for, for my studio, um, I like to call my clients two weeks beforehand and go over what they're going to wear, what daddy's going to put on, what mommy's going to wear, and how can we prepare and pick outfits for the kids so that everybody looks great together. Because the last thing I want is, you know, for you for me to take pictures and then you regret what you wore at the time. Um, I'm very blessed because in my studio, I have tons of gowns and dresses and outfits for moms and children. Uh, wardrobe is included for children under three. So, you know, during that video consultation, I'm happy to show my dresses and my gowns to mama and say, is there anything here that you would like to wear so that you don't have to go shopping? Um, and it's not just for expecting mothers, right? It's, it's for moms uh, post baby or for my mom being me sessions. So, um, you know, I think that's an, an added service that I like to offer my moms. Um, but for the moms who don't wanna wear the foo-foo gowns, I'm happy to help you go shopping in your own closets and say, Lily, you know what? If everybody's gonna wear dark blue, let's find navy accessories that go with, you know, um, a harmonious look. So um, yeah, I think it's really important that everybody looks great together. And for the families who don't, you know, necessarily want to do the video pre-shoot consultation, what I would recommend for, for family portraits, um, keep it neutral, keep it simple and timeless. Definitely avoid large logos and prints. Uh, as much as we love Gap and Nike, those logos are extremely distracting. And you'd be surprised how many times, you know, families come back and say, Jamie, can you please Photoshop that out? So avoid the logos, avoid the prints, and try to keep it neutral and and uh, and timeless. That's usually my best piece of advice for wardrobe. Mm. The other thing I think that maybe prevents some people from taking photos is just uh, self-consciousness and, you know, body image, uh, especially for women who have had a baby. For some of us, it's like your whole body changes forever. <laughs> some people bounce back very quickly, but not all of us are that lucky uh, in terms of, you know, our genes, perhaps. So, you know, with that, it can be hard sometimes to see yourself so clearly. And maybe there's a level of discomfort uh, with our physical appearance. How can we uh, help moms be more accepting of their new version of themselves? And, and how do you, I guess, bring out their best, you know, when we have all these internal dialogues happening and, you know, having to present ourselves in front of a camera? I think, wow, <laughs> that's a loaded question, but it's, it's, not, it's not untrue. Um, and I do get that request quite a lot, right? Um, moms who, they'll book a session with me and the first thing they will say is, Jamie, I don't feel good. Um, so what I'd like to say first is, it goes by so fast. Those nine months when you're expecting a baby go by so quickly and your body is creating a child. It's creating a baby. Um, and uh, what they say is, other than the first year of your life, when you are pregnant, that is the fastest growing time in your life. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with embracing those curves. Yes, you're going to put on a little bit of weight. You're carrying a baby. Yes, you might feel a little bit, you know, not like yourself. It's because your body is making a baby. And so with the mama session, um, I do talk to mamas at the pre shoot consultation to say, tell me all your problems. What is it that you feel uncomfortable with right now? They might say, Jamie, I'm not loving my arms. Or Jamie, I've got some extra chin going on. Can you please help me with those things? Or Jamie, not loving my legs at the moment. Well, I, the first thing I always say is, first of all, please stop. You look amazing. And second of all, I do have some tricks up my sleeve to make you feel and look comfortable at your session. So for example, moms who don't love their arms, I'm going to put them in a gown with sleeves. Mamas who don't love their legs or ankles at the moment, they're going to wear a long dress to cover the legs and you know, make the focus about their face. The double chin situation, I try to make sure that the light is from above so that this falls into the darkness and you only get the most flattering sides of the face. Now, I do occasionally get Photoshop requests and I don't necessarily believe in, you know, Photoshopping people to the point that they look completely fake. Um, but I am happy to do some retouching just to make mama feel a little bit more comfortable with the portraits at the end. But I, I'm constantly reminding mamas that 
what your body doing right now is miraculous and glorious and it goes by so so quickly and whether you feel you know if you don't feel like yourself or you do you're going to love the fact that you did this for you and your baby and your family mm -hmm. So um, when did you transition or have you transitioned into full-time photographer and no, are you, or are you still working your full-time job? Uh, I do have a full-time job. Oh, um, wow. I don't, I don't want to get into that right now because um, I don't, I don't want to get into the details, but yes, I, I am a, a jack of all trades. I, it's a wow. bit of a act right now. Yes. <laughs> so okay. I'm definitely a working mom. I have a full-time job during the week and um, on the weekends is all studio. And you look so energetic <laughs> on one night. You are doing great. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. So um, do you do any outdoor locations? I do. So as, and it, it's a great question because everybody, you know, when you look at my portfolio, you do see a lot of my studio work, but I'm happy to go on location, especially, you know, here in Toronto, we experience all four seasons. So obviously, we, we can't, well, I've only done a few winter shoots. Uh, I had a mama ask me once if we could go right after the storm because the trees were covered in icicles and she was like, that's totally my theme. Um, but it's usually in the summertime. So I'll take my clients out to uh, local parks nearby or um, I took a couple of my recent graduate portraits just along Young Street around the, the skyscrapers and the buildings uh, for a nice backdrop. But yes, I'm, I'm definitely open to outdoor photo shoots as long as the weather is um, cooperating with us. I have one on Sunday. So. Okay. <laughs> and do you do any on location here in Willowdale? Have you done any photo shoots in any of the parks in our community? I have. Um, just at the end of Park Home Avenue in front of North York Center. I forgot the name. But it's a parquet that has the, squ uh, the square frames with the benches and the lights. I did an engagement um, photo shoot there. I think that's the Parkview Garden, Neighborhood Garden. So there's actually a vegetable garden behind that. Yes. Bench, I think. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And there's there's a little horse with keys on right on the corner of Beecroft. Um, oh. Horse with keys. I, yeah, Beecroft I and Beecroft and Park Home Avenue. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. Yeah. It's right by Gibson House. Right, right. Yes, yes. So that little park out there I've taken clients to. Um, I've taken another client right by the Rose Gold buildings at Young and Finch. Um, right, okay. They're unmistakable. They're beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I took another client to the Nestle building at Beecroft and Shepherd because we like the reflection of the building. And it's funny, I finally got a chance to walk around the building because I don't, I don't normally get, I, I drive by, but I don't, always walk in that area. And I got to do a full tour around the Nestle building. And there's some really pretty nooks and crannies there that I had no idea existed. So I feel like, you know, if you ever have an opportunity to do a walk of our neighborhood, you can find some really nice hidden gems. Yeah, so there's actually uh, a neighbor, Bern mm -hmm. Waller, who hosts regular walks around mm -hmm. our neighborhood. So he's done one around Mel Lastman, around Edithville. He chooses a different location. Uh, and there's a group of people in Willowdale who go on these walks and sometimes they include photography as part of their walks. So, oh. uh, yeah, it's a great way to meet other neighbors and find different nooks and crannies that are mm -hmm. in our community. But it's great to hear that as a local photographer, you've also found some places to capture some moments for people right here in our neighborhood. Exactly. Another, another family favorite of mine is Earl Bales. You, yeah. can, you can get the autumn leaves and it's so easy to take portraits there and not be worried about crowds and crowds of people because there's just so much space there. Um, and then the other one that I discovered a few years ago was uh, G. Ross Lord mm -hmm. Park. Mm -hmm. At um, oh, it's between yeah. Duffer and Bathurst. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so that was another, like I found it and I was like, I, I have to remember to come back here for, for, how, uh, for fall minis because it's so beautiful. But there, there are lots of parks in our neighborhood. I just have to explore a little bit more. Yeah, when you have time between your business and your work and your daughter. Um, so tell me a little bit about your experience of landing here um, in 2015 and getting to know the community. Um, so in 20, when we purchased this home in 2015, 
a lot of the houses on our street were actually either under construction or getting ready to tear down. So when we first moved here, we didn't really have a ton of neighbors to speak to. Um, and then I got pregnant and all the new builds came and then all of the neighbors started flooding in. So I would say, you know, the first year and even, you know, the following year after I had Livia, it was a little bit lonely. And that's why I relied so much on my mommy and me and that mom group that I had that I had formed because we would meet up frequently to have our babies interact. Um, but now I would say that on our street, um, we have a very, very strong sense of community. And I'm really grateful for the neighbors that I have because we're always here for each other. Um, you know, I'm only, I'm a mom of one, but next door has four children and the one beside us has three. So my daughter is always surrounded by children. And, you know, my husband is more social between the two of us. And there's always like a daddy daycare happening in front of our home because the children will be playing and the daddies will all come, um, uh, you know, between the houses around us. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm really grateful that we have that. Um, it's not something we necessarily had when we were living in Richmond Hill, but it, oh, did it did take some time to develop. And we, you know, we have some neighbors, they don't live right on our street, but we do see them walk by every now and again with their dogs or just passing by to and from, from school. So we've really gotten to know names and faces now. And I'm, I'm really grateful for that. That's great to hear. Mm -hmm. Great to hear that, you know, there are still communities that are connecting. And what are some ways that you have found that have helped to foster that sense of, you know, being friends with each other right there on your street? Um, so I have to say, I got really lucky with our daycare because uh, Livia went to Young Hearts, which is just at the end of our street. And they used to organize really amazing events and keep parents in the loop on things that are happening in the community. Um, I think there was, uh, is it called Open Doors or Doors Open Toronto? So mm -hmm. they, they would let me know about things uh, things like that, like Gibson House, they had a petting zoo one year um, and um, garden education for children, like how to plant seeds and that type of thing. And there was another, I don't wanna call it a street festival, but the street was shut down around Canterbury Place where the police station and the fire department brought out the cars and the horses and the fire trucks. And I got to meet so many neighbors and parents of the children that went to my daughter's daycare and the surrounding area. I had no idea there were that many children in Willowdale. So, you know, to see everybody come together and interact and, you know, my daughter had the time of her life driving a fire truck for the first time. I, I thought that was remarkable. And you don't see that type of thing in Richmond Hill or, I mean, I haven't lived anywhere else myself, but I thought I thought that was so great to have and so great to see. So, mm -hmm. you know, I hope they keep that up now that the pandemic is almost over, maybe next summer perhaps. Um, but yeah, those, those are the things that were remarkable to me in our community. Yeah, actually, I, I think I was there that day um, mm -hmm. for the same open house to see the, my kids also love the fire trucks too. She yeah. Had, didn't want to leave. <laughs> so what are your hopes for Willowdale? What would you like to see happen here in our neighborhood? Let's see. So not much, because I think we've come a long way from when we first moved here, um, especially with the, with the neighbors coming in into the area. But if I had one wish for Willowdale, and this is going to sound so silly, but I wish we had more food trucks. <laughs> <laughs> I really love food trucks. And I know that, you know, for a while when, when I was working at Young and Shepherd, uh, mm -hmm. coworkers and I would stroll over to Mel Lastman Square and there would be about three or four food trucks every now and again. But if there was more space to accommodate more food trucks, that, that would be wonderful and definitely walking distance to me. Um, I think one of the conversations I had recently with a local mom was, more Ontario early years programs, but it seems like we've solved that issue because there was one opening just at Young and Shepherd. Um, and this same, this same mom is actually, um, if I understand correctly, she's going to start a new chapter of the Mommy Connections program mm -hmm. for just exclusively for North York. So I thought that was really great of her because um, as a new mom, you don't always know where to go. And if we can have more programs and more support for, for families, I think that would be incredible. Yeah, for sure. And um, even though there is one center or, or opening at Young and Shepherd, I will say, like, I don't think funding for early years programs has 
increased with population growth. So you know how you have to compete for all those uh, spots? Yeah. yeah, I think that the number of spots is not, to my knowledge, there hasn't been an increase in funding for more families to be able to participate, which is unfortunate. But um, yeah, have you tried the Korean food stall outside of H Mart at Church and uh, uh, and Young? No, please tell me what they have. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, I mean, our family favorite is those uh, red bean and custard fish. They make like a pastry fish. Oh yes. Uh, but they have some also. Um, salty things too. So you could get a whole meal at their stall. And I think they are a staple. They used to be located outside of Shoppers Drug Mart on Young. And then now they're uh, right beside H Mart. And so my family, they're regular. Yeah. So you definitely, if you like food trucks, that's definitely a place to, and Sebastian, my colleague loves the <laughs> balls there. So yeah, you can get all kinds of those like fish balls and soup and it's a great snack. Mm -hmm. so. I used to have a client, she, she's a regular of mine, and every time she comes to a photo shoot, she brings me a red bean fish. I don't oh, know where she gets it from. I'm not yeah. sure if it's in the, what, the same place that you're speaking about, but it would be nice to know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So once your daughter has it, you will have regular orders for more. <laughs> <laughs> So now we're going to start the Willowdale rapid fire round and just oh. like a few quick questions okay. about, you know, things that you like to do in Willowdale. So Ooh. the first question is, what is your favorite spot to hang out in, in Willowdale? Minami, the, the Japanese oh, restaurant yeah. by Young and Bing. Yes, uh, the we like basic udon noodles, right, in different yes. forms. Yes. It's, so our favorites are the udon. We're going to talk a lot about food, Lily. <laughs> Creamy udon with salmon and then the corn, the corn fritters. Mm. Oh, yes. The corn fritters are incredible there. Mm. Yes. So, good. And so is that your favorite place to eat then? Yeah, that would be our favorite place to eat. It's, if you're speaking, just hang out. We tend to go to Hendon a lot. Mm. My, my daughter practices tennis. And then after her tennis, she goes to the water park when the weather is, is good. It's her most favorite place to play and hang out and meet other children. Yeah, water, the splash pads are definitely, I think, all-time family favorites for all families here in Willowdale. So Willowdale Park, mm -hmm. I really like the one at Glendon Park, uh, oh, Glendora, okay. Glendora Park. Okay, Have you been there? no, I, oh. you know, I will probably know it if you, if I, like, if I see it, because so I see You drive to the end of Willowdale, so you pass okay. Shepherd. Okay. You go south on Willowdale, and then you hit this green spot. You park your car, and then you'll see this giant stretch of green that has a really big park. So lots of space for like a kid to ride their bike, to play in the park, and to do the splash pad. I love that. I'm yes. going to have to pay a visit for sure. Glendora Park. You will love it. Okay. <laughs> um, and what do you think sets Willowdale apart from other neighborhoods? I, this is going to sound, I, I don't know if this is going to sound silly, but North York Moms, <laughs> North York Moms is that when I think of community, I think of North York Moms right away. And I know that it's not necessarily seeing people face to face, but if there's any question that I have regarding our community, somebody is always available to answer within minutes. Yeah. Um, and I really don't think any other neighborhood has what we have. That's, that's incredible, honestly. So I say to people that North York Moms has defined my experience of parenting. Exactly. That I I never feel like I'm doing it alone. I never feel like I'm going to have questions that can't find solutions. I know I can tap into the brains of thousands of moms for mm -hmm. the best ideas. So I completely agree that it's a it's a gem. And the reason it's a gem is because there's so many amazing uh, and generous moms who invest in our community, who are willing to take that time to answer people's questions. That's exactly it. And I mean, if I can add other, other than North York moms, our food selection is pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is there a hidden gem that you would be okay to share uh, with us about here in Willowdale? 
I don't know if it's necessarily a hidden gem, um, but I would, when people say, you know, what's your favorite place in Willowdale? I always say Bay Code. <laughs> Oh. Again, with the food. Again, with the food, I'm sorry, but it's true. They they have the best croissants in the world. And I, you know, I have friends in Montreal who are like, what is this bake that you keep talking about? I must see these gourmet croissants, Jamie. And I'll literally get one, show them the inside of a custard croissant. And they'll say, that is outstanding. I've never heard of such a thing. So food-wise, hidden gem, bake code, probably. Yeah. But I feel like a lot of people know about bake code now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I've never had their custard croissant. Now I have, see we're exchanging ideas here. You must. You must. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe that's the hidden gem. Not bake code, but the custard croissant. <laughs> yes, that's exactly it. You have to. They're they're phenomenal. <laughs> Something to order tomorrow. And what is one thing that you'd like to see more of here in Willowdale? Other than the food trucks. I'm not sure. Oh, maybe more community events, but I think I'm just wishing that because of the pandemic. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm just craving more get togethers, right? Um, so yeah, in general, like when there's not a lockdown, there's usually something happening at Mel Lassman Square every mm -hmm. single weekend in the summer. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we've missed a lot. But I am excited to let you know that um, we're holding our second ever Willowdale Christmas Parade um, at the in December. It will be a walking parade. So just, you know, want to set the expectations because we've never had like a, a parade through Willowdale. So, you know, we're starting small. The first year uh, was in 2019 and we walked with decorations on us. We had about 100 people. It was like minus 20 degrees. We had caroling at Lee Lifeson Park. We had hot chocolate that we served to everyone. And this year, what's going to be unique about it is, uh, first of all, we're going to be walking part of our parade down Young Street. Um, and the second thing is we're having a mini Christmas market as well. Oh. So, and we're supporting some really unique vendors here in our neighborhood. So we're really excited. We'll be sharing more about it in the months to come. But uh, stay tuned and definitely, you know, it's something that I'm sure your daughter will enjoy on December 4th. How did you miss that? How yeah. did you miss that in previous years? Yeah, yeah. so it, we did our first ever one in 2019. Okay. Um, yeah, so this will be the second year. We had to take a break last year because of the pandemic. But this year, you know, we're doing it with some, uh, I guess, changes because of COVID. So, for example, although we won't be caroling because, you know, there's that risk of singing beside people, but there will be live music and we're serving hot chocolate and chili. Oh, so, yeah, it's going to be a great time to come out and meet neighbors and sell and bring some joy to our streets together. So, yeah, so this is, this is the year to bring back the joy. Yes. We all need it. And I also think that there's been so much isolation with the pandemic that we need to remember that we live in a neighborhood, that we're not just in little, you know, pods of our own home and our own immediate neighbors, but we have a community that we can be part of. So that's our hope for the, and it's in collaboration with the Willowdale Church Coalition, uh, as well as, you know, a bunch of neighbors who really want to see more Christmas spirit come mm -hmm. here to our neighborhood. So yeah, hopefully you and your family can also join us. Looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, so if anyone wants to find out more about you, they can visit your website, which is, can you let us know what the URL is? Is it there? Oh. JamieLucas.com. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yes. And are your holiday minis, are, are you still signing families up for that? Yes. So my first one is starting this Saturday, which is the teddy bear workshop. I'm really, really excited for that one because it looks like a, a main street scene with the teddy bear is spread out and it, it's just so, so lovely. Um, but they are happening four weeks in a row. Each Saturday has only five sessions each. 
some of the days are almost sold out. So I'm really, really excited this year. Um, and if anyone's interested in booking holiday minis, uh, they're definitely on the website. So get your spot now before they're all gone. I feel like with the weather changing, everybody's starting to realize, oh, Christmas is just around the corner. So <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. booking in like an, the span of an hour just this morning and I thought, okay, it's go time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is very fast. The season is upon us. So mm -hmm. well, it's been a pleasure to chat with you and so good to know that there is a local family photographer. I, I, you know, I wish I had known about you when my kids were younger with the dresses. I think my daughter would have loved that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing more of you and more of your work in our neighborhood. Thank you so much, Lily. It was lovely chatting with you. Thank you. Woohoo. Amazing. Thank you, Lily. Thank you, Jamie. This was so nice. And Jamie, if you can't wait for Christmas for another community event, we do have one coming up at the end of October as well. We're doing uh, Back by Popular Demand, another Krispy Kreme Donut Day. So I don't know. It seems to me that you're into sweet treats. Do you like Krispy Kreme Donuts? I have a sweet tooth and I'm obsessed with Krispy Kreme. Okay, so you don't have you, you don't have to drive to Mississauga. You don't have to drive to Scarborough. You don't have to go downtown. We're bringing them to Willowdale, um, and they're they're on sale right now. I've got the website scrolling down at the bottom. So if people are interested, um, HalloweenDonutDay.Eventbrite.ca. You can pre-order your donuts and you can pick them up. Uh, we're going to be at Willowdale Baptist Church, just by Finch Station, uh, just uh, Young and Olive. Um, doling them out on the 29th if you order five or more we'll deliver them in willowdale um so maybe jamie after i eat a dozen donuts i can do a maternity photo shoot with my food <laughs> with my food baby is that okay sebastian i got you pick any okay. gown you want <laughs> okay perfect yeah yeah yeah. i want to show off my arms and my legs so um just just keep that in mind all right that's 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 tmi we'll talk off we'll talk off uh, off the live stream but uh, thank you again to both of you. It was so nice to hear you chat. And uh, we'll see you next time, Willowdale. Same time, same place, new neighbor. Have a good night. See you next time. Woohoo!